Blessed good morning to everybody. Everybody good this morning? Anybody had any strange land experiences last week? You had some? <laughs> well, I hope you were still able to sing. <laughs> Even if the, you were a bit out of off key or whatever, or you forgot some of the lyrics, you were still able to sing. Because our prayers to God, regardless or despite of whatever we are going through, must remain consistent and constant. I want you to turn want you to turn with me to the book of St. John, chapter four. A familiar passage of scripture. Sure, all of you would have heard the story about Jesus and the woman at the well. You know, sometimes we think that everybody would have heard the story. But sometimes when you ask certain children, they ain't got a clue about what you're talking about. So we must never take it for granted that they know. <laughs> I just want to read from verse 1. Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. Although in fact, it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. And verse 7 says, When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me drink? For his disciples had gone into town to buy food. Let's bow our heads. Almighty Father, we give you thanks this morning for your word. We thank you for your worship. We pray, dear Lord, that as you know, will speak to us, dear Father, that, dear Father, as I remove myself, dear Father, that your word will go forth as thus says the Lord. We ask you, dear Lord, for your anointing and your blessing upon myself and your people at this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you again for joining me this morning. For those who are watching via live stream, I pray that this word will be a blessing to you as well. Jesus was tired and he went and he sat by the well. You recognize that in life, we will have a series of what they call divine encounters. Jesus is going to want, is going to, want to meet with you at some time or several times in your life. And the thing is about Jesus and the way he keeps his appointment is that his appointments are always on time. In fact, you recognize who got there first. Jesus was at the well first. And then some versions will say, then the woman came along. Jesus was there first. And then the woman showed up. Jesus could have continued with his disciples and gone into town to buy some food. But he recognized he had an urgent appointment to attend. He was tired. He was hungry. And he sat by the well. It wasn't just a mere coincidence that he was there. But this woman, she had to come there as well. So he sat there, and I like to think that as he sat there, he waited for this woman to come along. It's not by pure chance that, you know, it wasn't just two people hooking up at a well just to have a conversation. It was far, far deeper than that. So Jesus is there waiting, and this woman showed up, and he begins to have dialogue with her. 
And I says many times in our life we have the divine appointments with God. There are times when God is there waiting for us to come along and keep your part of the appointment. How many times have you made an appointment and when you get there, you are there half an hour late, early, sorry, and you have to wait nearly two hours? It's not so with Jesus. Rather, Jesus is waiting on you to arrive. He recognizes you as such an important person that whether he's hungry or tired, he needs to speak with you this morning. So he's waiting on you. That appointment surpasses the, even the physical desire for food. So he's waiting for you to show up. And in verse 9, the Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I'm a Samaritan. How can you ask me for a drink? So Jesus would have asked her for a drink of water. But straight away, the woman had some issues. And sometimes we let issues get into our way. But I like God. Because he's not confused with the small stuff. Stuff that is irrelevant. That causes distraction. God is not interested in that. He did not get entangled with the generational and ethnic issues that were going on between the Jews and the Samaritans. They had issues on where is the right place to worship. Who was better than who. All of these things. They had issues with. But God wasn't concerned with these. You see, it's not important where you worship, but that you worship. So sometimes, when we allow things, the small stuff to get into me and cause distractions, we miss out on the bigger picture. I remember growing up back there in Walkers, there was often many disputes over property. Don't come from my land. This land belongs to me. What are you doing over there? Don't let your grass go over there. Don't let your sheep come up. Bear problems. Bear disputes. There was always noise and bickering. And as I pass walkers today and I look around, I recognize that all the property is still there, but none of the people who used to be bickering and fretting, fretting are no longer there. They are fretted about the small stuff. Stuff that wasn't really important because we recognize that in this life, you know, you don't care anything about from here. You know, you got to go along and leave it. So sometimes we get tied up and our life becomes confused and miserable because we are fretting, we are, we are bickering and sweating about the small stuff. Stuff that doesn't really matter, but just come and seek to cause distractions and cause us to lose focus. Jesus Christ did not sweat about the small stuff. He was not interested about what was going on between the Jews and the Samaritans. For him, he just wanted to have a drink of water. He wanted to engage in discussion. What really brings satisfaction? What really brings satisfaction? A question that we can ask ourselves at times. Are we satisfied? You know, we can go through this life gaining and achieving and still not be satisfied. What really brings us satisfaction? Is it the houses we have? Is it the cars that we drive? Is it the friends? What really brings satisfaction? She came to this well for water. Now we recognize that water is a critical part of life. It's a necessity for life. You just have to ask those people in St. John and, and St. Joseph, those areas. Water is critical for our bodies. We need it. So this woman has some physical needs that she wanted addressed. And water was one of the avenues 
in which these needs could be addressed. It wasn't just water alone, but she also seek, tried to seek fulfillment in relationships. Through relationships, she also tried to seek fulfillment. And as a result of her seeking, and what she was seeking, she sometimes she ran herself into trouble. We need to be careful about how we seek. We need to be careful of how we try to satisfy our longings and our desires. We must be very careful. Because not only you have those desires, but the enemy can also see the desires that you have. And sometimes he will try to put things in there to fool you into thinking this is what you really want. And you go after it only to find out this is not what you really wanted. But rather, it is a source now of all kind of issues in your life. She came to have needs addressed. But Jesus was there, thankfully, to show her what she really needed. In verse 11, Sir, the woman said, You have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? You know, at this, up to this point in time, the woman did not get it. The woman did not understand what Jesus Christ was trying to offer her. And sometimes, and that's okay, we don't always get it at first. Sometimes it takes several efforts before we can actually, before it cements itself within our lives. The woman did not know what he was offering. And sometimes, failure to know God leads to failure and relying in him. You see, she did not know who she was talking to. And sometimes when we don't know who we are talking to, but then it's difficult for us to trust. When we don't have that relationship, when we don't know what that person is capable of doing. So she didn't know what God was capable of doing for her. We serve a God who not only knows and understands, but is also able to do something about it. Many people know our situation. Many people understand our situation. But many people can't do anything about our situation. They can pray for us, yes. But sometimes you want a resolution and you want it now. God can't do something about that situation. So up to this point in time, she's not asked, she's not understanding what God is saying to her. But when the spirit convicts, or when the spirit begins to speak, we can expect differences to come about. And I like verse 16. Now this is why I have to call this a divine encounter. How does one behave? when they are confronted with the truth? How does one behave when they are confronted with the truth? Reading from verse 15, the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty. I have to come. I have to keep coming here to draw water. She wanted a water that she would never have to come back physically to the well. I don't know if she expected Jesus to run a pipeline to her home or what. But she wanted something to make life easier for her. So that she wouldn't have to be going to and fro. And most of the time, this is what we want in life. We want life to be a little bit easier. We want, don't want to have to be, you know, dealing with the back and forth of things, the this and the, and the things that are constantly going on in, within our lives. We want things a little bit easier. And this is what also the woman wanted as well. And he says to the woman, go, call your husband and come back. 
And the woman replied, I have no husband. And Jesus confronts her. Now this is the spirit confronting. This is the spirit confronting. Imagine me going and telling a woman, any wo this woman or any woman about how many men she had. I try to understand the tone in which Jesus would have said, how Jesus would have spoken to this woman. I can't imagine the tone that he would have spoken to her in. You had five husbands and you got six. And the one that you're with now isn't yours. Well, Ryan could go and tell a woman so. Why we get washing cast? <laughs> I'll be told about all my oh, I will be told <laughs> about all my relatives and all kind of thing. Well, I could go and tell a woman so. And Jesus was able to confront this woman and tell her what is. He was able to confront her with the truth. It tells me that this woman's heart was ready. Because nowhere in the word of God does this woman get offended. Nor did she, t nor did she get combative with Jesus. But simply accepted what he said and agreed. This is when the spirit speaks. So it tells me that when we speak, especially as men, we need the direction of the Holy Spirit. When we are speaking to people. She was not combative, nor offensive, but her heart was ready. She knew as she was convicted by the words of the Lord, that change was about to happen. Change was about to occur in her life. The satisfaction that she so desired was about to come to fruition. When you drink from the well of Christ, you are never the same again. So Jesus says, but whoever drinks from the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. How many of you this morning wants a drink from this well? In John chapter 7 verse 37, it says, On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood up and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. <laughs> I see Sister Martha drinking. <laughs> anyone who is thirsty... Come to me and drink. Jesus presents her with another brand of water. Straight from the springs of heaven. But even as she, Jesus presents her with this living water, she still fails to get it. So we are, as I said before, we are work in progress. But thanks be to God, he is patient with us. So it don't matter how many times he has to go over and go over with us, with us, he's patient and he's not giving it up on us. But as he continues, as the dialogue continues, Jesus finally declares to her in 26, I, the one speaking to you, am he. When Jesus reveals himself. When Jesus reveals himself. God reveals himself to us in many ways. In Matthew chapter 25 verse 35. On to 36. For I was hungry. And you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty. And you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison 
and you came to visit me. Jesus presents himself to us in many ways. Sometimes we miss the opportunities. How is God revealing himself to you this morning? What situation are you going through that God is revealing himself to you? He revealed himself after re the resurrection to the Marys, to the disciples on the road to Emmaus, to the disciples and to Thomas, and many more. Jesus Christ is still revealing himself to us today. We just need to pay attention. So that situation that you are presently going through, look for God in there. Because he's not only revealing himself to you through that situation, but he's also going to bring you out through that situation. You see, when you encounter the real water, the real Jesus, the real springs of life, you can't help but to run and go and share. Now, this woman thought that she came to the well for water, for the physical water. But in verse 20, it tells us that this head thing that she came for, she ran and left. Because she found something way better. She found Jesus. When you find and you encounter Jesus, it causes you to forget about everything else. Concentrate on him and worship him. You want to run and you want to go and tell people about this new man. Now she wasn't, when it came to men, she wasn't in experience. So she's going into the crowd and she's going to tell the people about this other man. But she was able to tell him in such a convincing and passionate way that she was able to bring the people to this man. This new man. This wonderful man. This man, Jesus. She ran with vigor and excitement and passion. And sometimes this is where we fall down. We encounter the living water, the real water, but our vigor and passion fails to match up with our experience. So as a result of our running and going and tell, we just sit here and that's it. Nobody understands about the encounter we have experienced. But she was able to run and go and tell the people, come see a man. Come see a different man. Come see a new man. A man that she was able to introduce the people of Samaria to. This morning, this encounter, we all have this divine appointment. What is Christ saying to us today? What is God saying to you today? We will recognize that, it, first of all, he knows that you are important. For you are peculiar people. He made you. He loves you. He wants the very best for you. So, his number one business is to making sure that he can connect with you. He's not confused or distracted about what's going on around but his focus is on you. He is here to satisfy you this morning. Not just with physical and material things, but he wants to give you that spiritual infilling. That infilling that will help you to get through your day-to-day -day experiences. When you, drink, when you drink from him, there's going to be, he's, going to, he's, going, he's able to quench a thirst. A thirst that we all have that is only quenchable through the Spirit of God. After this woman divine encounter, she was never the same again. She left, she walked apart, and she ran. How is your encounter with Christ today? 
Is he still sitting at the well waiting for you to come along? Hoping that you find your way to him? Is he here there still checking his watch? Wondering how long is sister A or brother B? How long is it going to take them for them to turn up for them to have this divine encounter? How long is it going to take? Jesus is at the well waiting for you this morning. He wants that divine encounter with you this morning. He wants to fill you with that water in which you will never thirst again. Any of you thirsty this morning? Drink from the well of Christ. Drink from the well of Christ. So despite what you may be going through, your spirit will be well watered and you will be satisfied. God is able. God is able to satisfy every need that you have. Quench every thirst. So no matter how strange things may seem, how lonely, how depressed it may become, God is still there. Let us drink from him this morning. Let us have our thirst quenched. May God continue to bless you. May he continue to keep you. Do not allow him to keep sitting at the well, but find your way to him this morning if you need to. And may God continue to bless you. Amen.